the breakouts are fewer in percentage wise than the bounces and so if i'm here for a high probability trades the probability is on the bounce not on the break All right so if you think of a market top you can have a top of v top like one top and then a few days later oh we have a double top <laughs> a few days later we have a triple top that's bounce 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 do you hear quadruple tops or quintuple tops that's usually when you see the breakout right so one two three bounces okay sure i'll play bounce on the fourth i don't play bounce i expect a break <laughs> right so it's it's the logic you, you have to put yourself in the market's shoes welcome back to the language of awesome wish we had a discussion more than a year ago or so that video really popped up on youtube and it got a lot of views so the also trade i respect for is Dedication he is also within trading and things he does is just different from, from other people taking it very seriously. Uh, Jean Francois, you're one of the biggest viewerships I had on YouTube in the past year or so, I, I believe. So good to have you back on the podcast. Good to discuss trading again. Good to see what you're doing and how you're like, what you're up to. Yeah, yeah. Well, glad to be here. Uh, the last time we spoke, it generated a lot of views on on your stream, and it proved to me that there's actually a demand out there for what we do, the skill we have, and a lot of people came seeking me out because of that podcast and here i am willing to help some more <laughs> that's awesome for sure yeah let's make first talk about this uh tell me for since the last year and a half or so since we last book what changes actually is it the same thing are you trading exactly the same or does something change in the market or, 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 or the way you trade the stream of students that's been coming by has allowed me to forward test the strategy and so I used to operate like a business. I still operate like a business, but now my business hours have expanded. And so originally in order to build consistency into my system, I was focusing on two hours per day, the same two hours every day. And then I made sure to finish trading every day. And what's happened since the podcast, I start trading at seven and I pretty well finished trading at four or five. And so I'm now forward testing the strategy all day. I'm not trading all day, but I am in front of the computer a lot more than I ever used to be. And so I've seen the market under the conditions that this strategy never experienced before. And so I myself have tested it through those conditions. And so it's made me a better trader at the same time. And teaching makes me a better trader at the same time. So should everybody else be teaching. Definitely. That's something I asked on myself in the past as well, uh, for sure. So it looks like I'm in your busy, but I kind of want to go back and discuss some of the things we discussed in the past. Yeah, yeah you got us through your whole process, everything that you know about the way you trade, and that was awesome. But is there anything else that we kind of left out that you included in the past few that you want to maybe talk about some? some? Uh, well, in, in general, what I'm doing is focusing on small, achievable, repeatable goals, which is very different from swing trading. And so in general, what I'm doing is a shift in mindset. Once you have this shift in mindset, the strategy becomes really easy to grasp, right? So instead of trying to hit the ball out of the park, I'm really trying to make it to first base. And if I can make it to first base, I can make it to second, I can make it to third, and eventually I can make it all the way around. And so I'm not trying to outdo myself day by day. I'm just trying to hit an average and if I can get my average, I'm happy. And so I think last time I focused on the process and this time I, it's more, well, since a year or so, I've realized the strategy relies more on psychology than on rules. And so this is really where the difference lies. You know, people need to have the right psychology to fit their model. You know, a swing trader may not be a swing trader internally, <laughs> and that will never work, right? So you have to find what works for you. And in this case, I think this works for me and it works for the other 200,000 people that watch that video. This is something I wanna hear about. So you could give your strategy rules to two different people that could trade it like very well in the market, but then they could also fail completely. What could be good, what could be bad with the strategy? So why do you think that is and how can you fix that? Uh, in the case of this particular method, we're trading solely for the reward. And so our focus is on reward, not risk reward. And so the focus is on reward. 
and we manage risk. Whereas when you're a swing trader, the focus is on risk reward. So you have a statistic that you're targeting and then you're looking for that statistic across a universe of instruments. And you're hoping to find one or two pairs per day to trade, one or two trades per day. That leads to series of losses and once in a while you'll have a win. What I'm doing is very different. I've lowered the bar as low as the bar can go. So now I'm targeting two or three pips and I'm doing it 20 or 30 times per day, right? So instead of having one trade and waiting for one outcome, I'm taking the same risk, but I'm spreading it like you would spread butter on toast. And now I'm having an average outcome every day. And this is in my control. I'm controlling the risk. I'm not letting some stop loss tell me I lose, right? And so I, I'm in the market passively trading, not targeting a specific statistic. My focus is on the process. If I take a three, four, five, ten 10 pip loss, I don't care. I'm back on the horse and I target the next two or three pip win, right? And so my focus is forward looking, always on that next trade, next trade, next trade, next trade. And the loss is something that gets recovered in the process. Most people that swing trade will lose, you know, Mr. Market, please give me 50 pips. I'm willing to lose 25. And as soon as they lose 25, in their mind, they now need 26 to feel better, right? And so that's an, it's a cycle of death. It's a circle of death. It never ends. We have to get out of that series of losses and get into series of wins, however small they may be, <laughs> just to change your psychology. <laughs> and so that's what we do. We lower the bar as low as the bar can go. So that gets us an income. That's the reward. And then on the flip side, we now manage the risk. And so because I have this stream of income coming in, I have a high win rate. If I take maybe a hundred trades, I may have you know, four or five losers out of a hundred. Those four or five losers can take away all 95 wins. And so I must, must be on the lookout for those losers. That's my job. I'm a risk manager. The income takes care of itself. It's a very high probability trade, two or three pips. It's almost unavoidable, <laughs> right? So I'm not managing wins. I'm managing losers. And that's in my mind. You know, that's, that's where it comes from. Trading happens between your ears, right? It's not the platform. It's not the fancy colors. It's not the tools you're using. It's in your head. And once you have that sorted out and it suits you, you have it golden. I'll be curious to hear about this because a lot of traders have this kind of fear of loss of like when they have a shoe losing trades, they kind of start to like get all like stressed out and everything because they had losses. They're going to accept that too much. So they want to move to strategies like yours where it's like a very high win rate, but then they're frustrated because they cannot get the wins fast enough or the big profits fast enough. They expect that because it's high win rate, they'll be able to make like a, a 60 R in a day or something because of the high win rate. There's something with expectations, something with losses, but tell me what you see there and how can you work on that? Yes, you're absolutely right. So in the beginning, <clears throat> I think we, we, the industry has lied to us. Everybody starts being told, hey, start on the daily chart and you'll have better results there, right? But they also neglect to tell you, you're going to have bigger losses. And so over time, you find your way, working your way down to like a one minute chart where you can actually afford to lose, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> It's losing on the one minute chart is very, very different than losing on the daily chart. And here, if I'm in front of a one minute chart and I'm witnessing the loss taking place, I'm in control. I can stop this at any time. I, I, I don't have to watch it go to 36 pips. I don't have to watch it hit my stop loss. I'm in control. And even, even as uh, the, the market is moving, I can change the environment by adding an extra trade or two extra trades. And now all of a sudden, I'm not only in control of three trades, but I'm in control of the average of three trades. And that's the line that you're, you're moving. You're putting that line closer and closer to the current price. It becomes your break even. All right. So now you're controlling where your exit is. You're not telling them, you're not letting the market tell you where your exit is. And so by 
trading like an insurance company by pushing back against losses, right? And taking in tiny, tiny, tiny premiums all day long, you can profit at this. You need to manage the losses. It's okay to lose. It's part of the game. We're expected to lose, right? But we need to control how big those losses are. And if you if you find yourself revengeful, that's 3,000 years of evolution. You know, if somebody rips you off, you, you need revenge. And this is, it's in your DNA. In, in, it's in your DNA. You're learning to lose. You're learning to become a professional loser. You're learning to become a monk. And, right? So taking a 10 or 15 pip loss, you have to go back, reverse engineer that loss, figure out where you went wrong, and then tell yourself, hey, that's no big deal. That's four or five wins. And then just get back on the horse and create those four or five wins, right? So it's not one big loss and then one big recovery. That just creates mayhem. We need to control the loss and then recover that loss slowly and, and you know, uh, one trade at a time. Stick to your program. Stick to your process. If I can share my screen here, I have a couple of trades underway already. Uh, yeah, and that'd be awesome to, to have a look at, sure. Okay, so uh, I would start on the daily chart. Today is Easter Friday, uh, Good Friday, so uh, illiquid market, very, very illiquid market. We had uh, employment data come out from the U.S. And so my my process is always the same. I typically would start this at 8 a.m., so 40 minutes from now. Uh, I'm about 40 minutes ahead of schedule. But uh, the news has already come out, and so I feel kind of relieved. And uh, basically, we would look at the calendar, then we'd look at the daily chart. And because I live in North America, the daily candle is already 16 hours or so old. And so I'm comparing the daily candle with its predecessor. And I can see we've created overnight a lower high and a lower low. And that tells me that just today, there's a lean towards bearishness and that could be just a result of the news event and so i need to go and see this on an hourly scale and sure enough we made the high in the middle of the night we made the low as a result of the news event and so now i understand where i am in respect to support and resistance and i can start i can start drawing uh, critical levels levels that i need to have uh a call to action. And so from there, I can start looking on a five minute scale and appreciate those same levels, but now they're actually closer. And I call these, or we call them action points, right? We, we have something to do here. There's a job for us to do at some of these levels. If we get to these levels on average, if you draw these lines over and over, you no know, day after day after day, you're going to find after a while that these lines are about nine to 10 pips apart on average. That happens to be the standard deviation for the euro on a five minute chart, All right? So nine to 10 pips is the average move on the euro chart and on a five minute euro chart. So I take that measurement and this now becomes dynamic. I can take that average support and resistance and now I can move it around. And with that, I can now use this like a measuring cup in the kitchen. I can measure volatility with my little box. And so at the bottom, when the news came out and we finally made a bottom, what looked like a bottom, I put my first box there. And then I see we broke the box almost immediately. And so in my mind, that tells me, hey, there's a lot of incoming volatility because otherwise we would have been in the box for the duration of the box. That's a standard deviation, right? And so if that was standard up there, why are we breaking the box in two bars down here? Boom, boom. So that immediately begins a new box, right? So I'll just grab this. And now in our mind, in our mind, we're waiting to travel through this box for the duration of the box. And then boom, we break the box again very early. That tells you there's incoming volatility. And so you put another box there. You still don't know the future. 
And so you expect this. Most people would expect this to go, oh my God, it's going to the moon. And we know it's going to resistance. It's going to one standard deviation and it stayed there. Right? And so now we're in this box and we're back down one standard deviation and I'm buying at support. Right? This is now support and I will be willing to buy at this level of support down here and all the way down to the original support at the bottom. And so this already defines my risk. It defines how I'm willing to spend my money, where I'm willing to spend my money, and it's literally 1% per box. And so if the market keeps bouncing, I keep targeting 2.7 pips. Every time I click my mouse, I'm taking a 35 pip risk. All right, so my stop loss is down here, and that gives me space to do the work I need to do to get out of this trade if it doesn't work. Right? So I'm managing the risk. And managing means I can add or remove trades at will. Right? I'm not I'm not stuck having to obey a stop loss that's predetermined, you no know, risk to reward ratio. Right? I, I'm in control of the risk. Therefore, I allow it to be upside down. And I'll tell you right now, the average loss is about 10 to 12 pips. Okay, so it's about one and a half boxes. My stop loss is literally four boxes, four standard deviations, right? So if the stop loss is four times my boxes, my average loss is just under two boxes. Okay, so it's a, it, it's a way of framing risk. This is a measuring cup, and I know by measuring volatility, I can measure, I can end up measuring the average daily range, right? So before the war in Ukraine, the market was moving eight to nine boxes per day. And after the war, immediately the day after, the market started moving 10 to 12 boxes per day, right? The boxes did not change. The recipe changed, right? The number of boxes changed. And so now it's how the price is behaving. This is a standard deviation at this price right now is behaving in a standard way. It's moving nine pips up and down, and it's in the course of taking an hour to do it. Right? And so this is a normal standard deviation. And as long as the price remains normal, I can make my normal three pip money. And then when I'm done, I walk away because I turn off the faucet, right? I don't leave open trades. If I have a scalp for three pip in the morning, that is still open at four in the afternoon, I'm breaking all the rules in the book, right? I, I, I can't allow a scalp remain to be a swing and then have it close at 36 pip in the middle of the night. So it, it's up to me to take that loss before I turn off the computer every day, right? So this may even break down, but most people will go, oh my God, it's in drawdown, it's in drawdown. The, the fact is simple, it's not going here it's not it's not one straight shot and so if i can measure where it's approximately going i can anticipate how it should be behaving and then it's a, based on probabilities right i i set the probability and i play that probability and the probability is that it's highly highly likely to to stay in the box if it doesn't stay in the box, oh, right away your radar pops up, ding, 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 and you know you need to behave. You need to do something. If I remove the box, you are clueless. If I remove the box, you don't know what to do, where to do it, when to do it, how to do it. All right? So the, the box is framing the risk, and it allows us to... Uh, behave in such a way that you build consistency in your trading system. If you remove the box, you, the last variable, are inconsistent. Right? The variable I'm talking about is are, are these variables, your, your trading definition. Right? When you're swing trading, you may have a 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 risk to reward ratio, but you're looking for it across a universe of instrument. And because of that, no two days will deliver the same trades on the same pairs with the same size, the same target, and the same stop loss. Swing trading is nothing but inconsistent. 
what I'm doing here is quite the opposite. I have one target, one stop loss, one size, one time of day, one instrument, one everything, and the remaining variable is me. And I'm trying to define my behavior by using a box. So each of these boxes are pretty much wants to negotiate with the price of any pair. So in that case, length then. Yes. So the box is, uh, it's a calculation that we go through, but literally the way to, to you know, the dirty math, the way to approximate the box is to look on a five minute chart, go to the Asia session, right? So for me in North America, I'd be looking at eight or 9 PM. I live in the Rocky mountains. And so I'm two hours away from New York. And so you look in Asia and you look at eight or 9 PM and the average the smallest range that you see there is a standard deviation. And literally from there, the market finds its legs and it moves that standard deviation over and over and over all day long. Right? So if you, if you can figure out what that standard is, then the rest of the day, you're just moving that same box. Yet it so happens that every time frame has its own box. And every instrument has its own box. And so once, let's say you're, you trade the pound, your box will be 12 pips. Okay. So it's 12 pips tall and the standard move approximately is between 30 and an hour. So it could be 30 minutes. It could be an hour, but somewhere in there, right? So I use an hour long box. That's basically one of these flat periods in the middle of the night. Right. And so right away we see the market is it playing normally. It's behaving normal. I already made a little bit of money. Right. And, uh, as long as it behaves normally, I behave normally. I make my money normal way. As soon as it breaks the box, it prompts me to expect more volatility, more of the same. And therefore I continue to make two pips. Once we start to go sideways like this. Now I can play ping pong, ping pong. I can play both sides. This is trend ambivalent, right? I don't care if the market's going up or down. I'm making money sideways, right? So, uh, the market can have a trend. It needs to, I, I need to find the, the intended direction. So I don't get caught with my pants down, right? I don't want to get caught by something like this, but once the market settles down, Hey, <laughs> this is my playground, right? So this is how we, we, we exercise patience more than anything else. I, I, I'm patient avoiding the news. I'm patient waiting for the news to come out. I'm patient 10, 15 minutes after the news. I'm trading through my little boxes and I'm patient waiting for the price to come to the edge of the box. All I do is exercise patience all day. And in the last 30 minutes, I made $84. And so two pips, two pips, two pips is nothing to laugh at, especially when you're controlling the downside, right? So it's a very different approach and it, it lends, it, it lends itself to small sessions. So a couple hours here, a couple hours there, a couple hours here, a couple hours there. And, but the way to learn this is to focus on the same two hours every day. You want to be comparing apples with apples every day, right? So I don't practice this in the Asia section in order to be really good in North America, right? I practice this in North America so I can become really good in North America, right? There are different markets, different people on the other side of the computer. And so we're learning to behave. That's all it is. And it, it happens to be between your ears. So not everybody is, is built for this. Some people are meant to be swing traders now that's their psychology. It's not my psychology, but you know, it failed me. Swing trading absolutely failed me. It just never worked because of the goal that I had, right? Two to one risk to reward ratio. Now I'm free to create my risk to reward ratio. And on average, you know, if I look at my statistics, it's about one to one right? Because I'm in control. And this is very, very different than letting the market tell me, Hey, you're a loser again. <laughs> <laughs> right. So my psychology, my psych, 
my psychology changed. Now I, I start my day with two pips. Hey, hey, success. And it's easy to keep going from there. Right. If I wake up in the morning and I turn on my computer, it's, oh man, I lost again. <laughs> it's hard. And this is what created, this created the solution for me. And I did not design this. This was taught to me. Right. And so as long as, uh, you know, I, I heard it from the horse's mouth, I, I could trust the people that delivered to me this information. So it allowed me to step outside the box, you know, the risk to reward ratio, you know, the daily chart. It allowed me to step outside of the norm and, uh, trusting the source of the information was really, really important and then practicing it in real time. So in a demo account, but in real time, the same two hours that I was hoping to work in, that sped up my learning curve, right? Instead of wasting 18 hours per day on random markets, I focused two hours specifically on just what I'm trying to do. And then I went about my day, you know, and that sped up my learning curve. And so it, the industry is designed, you know, you've been invited over for dinner with a big smile, but they never told you you were going to be the meal, right? So <laughs> you end up on the table or on the menu and you don't know. You have to make that choice in real time along the way. And every day you choose to lose when you choose to lose, not when the market tells you to, right? And that's important. It's a choice we make. <laughs> Nico, I call out as you for sure. I'll, I'll get that one. For sure. It's a good one. No, but getting back to those boxes, the, the reason why I like this a lot, I'm curious by lots because many people have issues with like finding the support or since there are some charts, but these boxes are very mechanical. There's a thing that you cannot just like figure out by depending on like who you are. Look left. If you look left, the, the boxes relate to previous support and resistance. Today is kind of offbeat because of the news event. But if I just stack the boxes properly, right, what we're, what we find is the box itself. Let me remove that wick. Let me exclude that wick and just count the actual green candles here. What we find is that the box themselves relate back to previous support or resistance, right? So the box themselves are standard units of measure. And the way that they line up, they relate to what happened back here hours ago or days ago or minutes ago, right? So it, they're all standard moves stacked up. It's like Lego bricks, right? The Lego bricks can only give you certain structures. It's like playing Tetris. So this is kind of what I'm doing here, right? The box has never changed. What's inside the box changes all the time. That's why I can't have a hard target. I have an average income. I just play what the market gives me according to my boxes. At the end of the week, I have an average week. And that's not because I pushed 18 hours per day. It's because I focused on one mechanical way of trading, like you said. And this is it. The box, the box is a filter. It allows my brain to recognize safety. I'm, I'm safe here. And I know what to do on three sides of the box. It's the same thing all the time. It's always the same thing. And because there's a, <clears throat> sorry, there's a downside to this, there's an allowance to build into drawdown. It allows me to add to open trades. These are not losers. They're work in progress, right? So I am, I'm allowed to have three boxes of work in progress. So all this is trying to make me three pips. By the time I find the overall move of the day, you know, so I'm not getting caught with my pants down, I, I have pretty well closed all of my work in progress. And so I'm, I don't have high drawdown. I'm not closing losers at the end of my two hours. I'm walking away I'm with my money. I leave the casino every day. Right? What happens when you win at the casino and you stay? you end up losing. That's a cool point, because a lot of people would want to be at the charts as long as they can to get from the as they could, like, as long as they could. But that, like you said, is 
just kind of productive. Yeah. Yeah. If you make $20 and you know you make $20 every day, take it and walk away. Take it and walk away. At the end of the year, you have 200 days of $20. <laughs> Why risk it? Why push for 100, 200, 300 when you know you're going to lose that 20? Keep the 20 and leave the casino. Come back and do it again. Come back and do it again. Come back and do it again. Right? So this is what we're learning to do. We're learning to behave in an environment that is out to get us. And so you're forever playing on a defensive and you can only be offensive when the opportunity presents itself. And so we know in Forex, two hours per day is the best time, for me anyways, it, that two hours, that same two hours every day is my sandbox. If I play outside of that sandbox, I'm risking outside of normal, what I, what I normally you know, feel safe with it. And so I don't start early because I'm facing news. And I try to not stay late because I'm facing volatility that's disappearing. And so I have to stay inside of my business hours, optimize what I do there, right? And then once you have something that works, you just repeat it. You don't change it. And so because I'm trying to sit here and, you know, make a couple of dollars on Easter Friday, uh, on Good Friday, I'm really, I'm pushing the limit of this strategy. You know, I should be taking the day off. (laughs) <laughs> there's it's an illiquid market and you know the futures are closing in a few minutes everything's closing today spot market will be the only thing open and the spreads will be widening in a few hours and i want nothing to do with this so yeah we we have to know our environment and as day traders it, it's in the title right you're flat every day interesting and that's why i think these views are so powerful because like what you say makes sense, but people don't realize it sometimes. Like we don't realize that they've been spending way too much time in at the charts or, or trading like every day. And they just like by themselves they wouldn't be able to recognize it. But hearing it from someone else makes it that they, they identify themselves. They know that they've been moving strong and they can readjust and get themselves in it. So I think that's why interviews we have in past got so many views. Maybe this one will get that many, which is cool. Uh, but it's really the, the part of like these interviews are kind of like, hearing address from traders, like what they do, what they think about and applying it to your own trading afterwards. So I think Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's you have to design a strategy that works for you. Some people enjoy running robots. Some people enjoy trading manually. I do a little bit of both. For me, when I run EAs, I feel like I'm running a restaurant and I'm managing employees. Right? It's like one one guy's not showing up for three days. I have to fire him. Right? <laughs> this kind of stuff. Right? You're turning on robots. You're turning off robots. You're you're managing trades. You're managing robots. I'd rather be managing trades. It's just in my mind, I, I, I see risk through my lens, not through the lens of the robot. And so I would rather manage risk than manage robots. But that's just me. Everybody's a little bit different. I have friends that are you know, great at running robots and, and that's the way they make their living. I have another guy that just trades news. I avoid the news like the plague, right? So we're all very, very different. We all have to do what works for us. You can't copy me. I can tell you what works for me, but you have to make it work for you. Right? So yeah, try try to learn from a book in this business is pointless. You have, you learn through experiences, right? So that means you need to show up and do perfect practice, not random practice. So th- this is really, it's a mechanical approach to success, right? Step by step by step, instead of randomizing you know, stepping stones across the river. I follow the beaten path. And uh, having learned this literally from the industry, from the horse's mouth, it allowed me to, ah, okay, I know this will work if I just practice it. And so I just had to settle down and stop randomizing my approach to trading. You know, just settle down in one way and learn everything about it. Become a specialist. And that was it. I shouldn't say that was it. It's still it. It's still ongoing. (laughs) It will never end. What would you do if you didn't have that strategy, if you didn't have that process in place? What would you go looking to find something to trade these days? Well, on a day like today, probably nothing. Uh, If I'm not using boxes, I would rely on Bollinger Bands. They're the next closest thing, right? So uh, they allow me to measure volatility over 20 bars or 12 bars, whatever you select. 
And so this is kind of a similar idea, uh, but I would find a way to measure time because we've been lied to. You know, all this all this time we've been told uh, the mar- you cannot time the markets, and I beg to differ. Right? This is it. This I, I'm proving it to you here. You know, we can see when the next move is about to come because they're standard moves, and so you can anticipate. This is a lot like forecasting the weather, right? If you think, if I were to ask you where you live right now, what's the weather next week? Your success, dismal, almost negative, right? You're going to lose every time I ask you the question. If I ask you the same question, but now I say, what's the weather next hour? Your success goes up. And here I am looking for the weather in the next few minutes, right? And so my success is extremely high. And because I limit what I look for and how far into the future I look for it, I know when I'm wrong and I can stop it. Well, enough, that's it. And then, you know, right myself or get, get on to the other side or do whatever I need to do. It's a, it's a step, it's a, it's a logic kind of step, right? You, you, you do one thing, it leads to a yes or no answer. You do something else, it leads to another yes or no answer. And then eventually you run out of options. That's box number four. The market has tricked you. That's it. You lose for today, right? But that's not the norm. You typically would leave the casino with money, right? So we're here to fight every day and to overcome those losing days, right? The losing days are there, there, they do exist. I lose like all the time. I took losses today. Uh, you know, I took a handful of losses today and this is normal that the, the problem we have is we cling to our losses and then we forget that it's only a few trades to make them back. Right. So yeah. Uh, right now, see, we're back to this support area here. It's, and if I put my boxes back to where they were, uh, you'll see how it lines up with the box, right? It lines up with the box right here. And so uh, this would be a perfect place to buy. So I'm adding work in progress to an open position already, right? I'm thinking this is not going to China. It's not going all the way down here. Well, China from where I live, <laughs> it's not going across the globe. <laughs> it's, uh, it's going to find support. And then once it finds support, you know, somewhere in this area or even in this box, maybe even in this box, somewhere before here, the market will find a reason to rotate to look just like it did here and here. And we will have a reason to get out of these trades with money or a break even. Right. So I'm managing this away from these. And I'm doing it by spending more money, by changing break even, right? I am maneuvering the average of all my trades by adding more trades, right? So it's a, it's a maneuvering thing. I'm, I'm engineering my exit because obviously it's not making me the three pips I was looking for, right? So I need to engineer a way out of this. And I do that by adding a couple of trades and now this number, Eight nine 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 is literally like one or two pips in front of my nose, right? I'm I'm within a pip of breaking even, and this is it. I manage where break even is so that I can exit with little to no loss. I take losses. Get don't get me wrong. We take losses doing this, but we manage them, and so we do that so that the win rate still overcomes the losses. Right. Tiny, tiny gains, but lots of them. Yeah, it's interesting. A lot of people will be seeing this as a break to the downside in that case. And they will see it going long, expecting price will just go down and down and down forever. Yeah. Yeah. But it, exactly. They think it's on the way because it's on the way down. Most people think, oh, I've kicked in little, you know, the sky is falling. But in reality, it's going to support. And then the, what happens at support? There will be some kind of a bounce. My job is to find support. Where is support? And so is it here? 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 Now I will keep trying to find it. 
three boxes worth. And so I already know how much money I'm willing to spend, how much money I'm willing to lose. And I keep trying. And it's the attitude of a lion. You know, you don't give up. You just keep trying, keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. And eventually you get what you're looking for. And this is it. You, you pace yourself. If you keep trying, keep trying, and you do all your attempts in one box, you run out of money. <laughs> you can't play. You can't get out of that box if it keeps moving up against you. We are learning to pace ourselves and manage our way out of a drawdown, right? Drawdown is not bad. People equate drawdown with loss. These are open trades. Loss is a closed trade, right? This is not a loss. This is work in progress. This remains red until it closes. It could close red, but it will remain red until it closes. And so I have to close it green, right? My job is to make sure these end up in the green somehow. And I do that by changing the average, right? So it's a skill that you acquire. You're building a position in order to profit from the next move, just like Wayne Gretzky plays hockey. Right? Wayne Gretzky always happens to be where the puck is. How does he do that? Right? How, do, how does my take profit happen to be where the next move is going? <laughs> right? Right? So I play like Wayne Gretzky. I put my take profit where the next move is going to be. Right? And I do that because it's off of support or off of resistance. I'm not a swing trader, I don't care for the whole move. I just care for that little bounce, bounce into my take profit. That's it. And if, I, if I'm bouncing, if this is truly support because of what we see on the left, because of the unit of measure that tells us we should be bouncing from here, that's all I'm looking for. The market can do whatever the market wants, right? So if it does something like this right here, guess where we're going? Oh, to the bottom of the box. I will be buying that too. <laughs> <laughs> but so this is keeping in keeping in mind that yeah they you're looking at the the chart for it down date today and you were you were seeing price kind of making a lower high making a lower low so that doesn't make you want to go short that date that makes you actually want to go long that day we'll see I, I i'm not trading the day i'm only trading what i see for two hours and so in that moment right now what what are we seeing we're seeing pullbacks the pullbacks are made up of up legs and down legs, regardless of the trend. And here I am about to make a little bit of money again. All right, so here, let's close these trades. Or no, actually, let's see if they actually go to the take profit. Boom, boom, there you go. Okay, so yeah, you, you have to really love trading to, uh, to get into this kind of mindset, right? Yeah, you're going against the crowd. You yourself were suggesting maybe we should, you know, be tempted to go short. The problem is shorting is good. There's nothing wrong with going short. If we make it up to this level right there, maybe I will go short. Right? If we get to right there, taking a short trade would be beneficial, right? There's room in this box to go short and back to the bottom of the box, right? It's all in the frame. It's all, how, how can I squeeze three pips out of this? The market goes up and down. It's not one direction all the way to the moon. And it's not one direction all the way to Antarctica. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it, once you know your frame of reference, this is it. This is something I can lean against. I can make a decision based on where I am in this box. And once that frame of reference gets threatened, I need to get out of there. Right? And right here, right now, if we push, if we can push into that resistance, one more blue bar, one more green bar, I will sell that and we'd be able to, you know, maybe squeeze a couple of dollars out of this. And the, if today was a normal day, not, no, not good Friday, we'd probably have a lot more volatility and this would be, uh, faster, right? We'd be doing this a lot quicker, but this happens to be a good day to show you, <laughs> uh, how this system works. Right, but it, all, all I'm targeting is support and resistance, and I do it all day, well, within two hours, and I do it in order to capture the bounce, not the swing, the bounce. And that bounce over and over and over fills my pocket full of change. 
right? And I then I walk out of the casino. If I overstay my welcome, the casino wins every day. Right? That 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 happens. I finish the week with less money if I trade more than two or three hours per day. And this has been a problem until about you know a year or so ago when I started forward testing this. Uh, all day long. (laughs) I've become a lot better at this than I was before. But yeah, so start with two hours because you can study your opponent. And then from there, you cannot expand your window and, you know, take on challengers from different environments. And so uh, we didn't quite make it there. We came back to support. I would buy this again. Right. So now I have a new target right there in front of me, two and a half pips, 2.7 pips or so. And I match support. This is all I care for. I don't care about this. I don't care about the lower highs, the lower lows. I'm, I just care for support. If I match support, there's a possibility of a bounce. One bounce at the right time of day is worth more than my target. And I'm basically guaranteeing my exit by asking for less than the average bar, right? Right now, the average bar is 1.7 and my target is 2.7. And so right away, I, I need to wait one or two minutes to make money. On a, re- on a regular day, at this time, this should be four or five pips. And I'm only asking for two or three. So I'm asking for less. Mr. Market, give me 10. And he's already moving along, giving people more than that, right? So I'm asking for less than the ATR, guaranteeing my exit, right? So we're testing that support area. Uh, If that support holds, I'll get back up to this zone up here. If the support fails, I would expect a move to the lower side of the box and eventually a move back up. These are all standard moves. Right, and so depending on how far the bounce is, how deep the bounce is, I will build and build and build up to a point. I know how much I'm willing to spend. It's not like I keep clicking until I can't click anymore. Right, I have a limit, and I know when to stop. And then we stop. And if we can't fix problems at that point because we can't spend any more money, we actively take losers off. Right, so we're not building into a losing position. Far, far, far from it. The end goal of this is to have this come back up. One standard deviation, period. Right? So I'm I'm trading because the market is moving. If the market is moving one pip per you know, per hour, there's really nothing there for us to do. As long as I can fill a box, I can make a little bit of money. I'll really like another thing you said, which is very interesting, which is you're looking for the bounce, not the swing. So I'll take the thing in my mind, what percentage of, of, of traders are, are actually looking for the bounce instead of the swing? And I think that mainly probably. Very small percentage. Yeah, everybody's trying to play the breakout. Everybody's trying to catch the breakout. And what precedes the breakout? False breaks. What's a false break? A bounce. So if you learn to learn, if you learn to play bounces and then you fix breakouts, you repair breakouts, you you average your way out of a breakout. Oops, did I give you the secret sauce? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Car- I actually know a guy doing that too, uh fading breakouts and what's your offer him. So Yeah 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 the the breakouts are fewer in percentage wise than the bounces. And so if I'm here for high probability trades, the probability is on the bounce, not on the break. Right? So if you think of a market top, you can have a top, a V top, like one top. And then a few days later, oh, we have a double top. <laughs> a few days later, we have a triple top. That's bounce, bounce, bounce. Do you hear quadruple tops or quintuple tops? That's usually when you see the breakout. Right? So... One, two, three bounces. Okay, sure, I'll play bounce. On the fourth, I don't play bounce. I expect a break, <laughs> right? So it's it's the logic. You, you have to put yourself in the market's shoes. We've bounced once. We've bounced twice. We've bounced three times. Do we normally bounce four? No, let's go, <laughs> right? And 
th- this is kind of what happens here. Uh, we're working with probabilities, not randomness, right? The market is on schedule all the time. The news comes out as per the calendar that's published a year in advance. The stock market opens on time all the time. The banks close on time all the time. The stock traders, participants are professionals for the most part. They're on schedule for the most part. Hedge funds and mutual funds buy on schedule, right? The market's not random. What is random is the people's uh, reaction to news, reaction to stuff, right? It, we're creating reactions. We need to be patient and react to things, not anticipate. And so what we're learning to do is limit what we anticipate to the box. Don't expect the weather next week. Expect the weather in the box and then play the box, right? And so this is really focusing in zoop, on what's happening right here, right now. It, who cares what the trend is? It's trend ambivalent. You you need to know the trend because if you don't, you're going to get caught with your pants down. You know, that's going to hurt. But while nothing's happening like this, do you care what the trend is? The trend trader does because he's sitting here doing nothing. I'm sitting here making $86 so far, right? So I don't need a trend, <laughs> right? The trend is, it's a make-believe thing. You can see it here. This, the trend right now, this little up leg is three boxes stacked up, right? This down leg, oh, gee whiz, it was four boxes stacked up. There is no such thing as trends. It's just sideways markets on top of sideways markets, right? Sideways market on top of sideways markets. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, so interesting. Sure. That's why I had this last talk with you. So I'm probably never going to trade the same way as you, but it's still like very, uh, like a big eye opener. Like we all pull two things, and we do things. And it's just such a different way of trading that I'm not used to. And probably I, I won't ever do, but this is something you can take away from your style to any, any kind of other style of trading, which is very uh, cool about it. There's a million ways to skin a cat. You know, this is just one of them. And it fits certain people's psychology. There's different types of traders. We all have our own pros and cons, and this fits the model that I need, right? So it's it's copying an insurance company. An insurance company will keep collecting small premiums every day, and that if they receive a claim, they push back, right? Push back. Same thing. The same thing. If I collect two pips, three pips, and if I come near 36, I push back. I, re- I refuse to lose, like the insurance company. I refuse to lose with logic, not because I'm afraid to lose, right? I refuse to lose that much. <laughs> That's, right? That's a cool analogy for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a business model, and it's a true, legitimate business model. And you we seldomly hear of insurance companies going bust, right? And they collect a lot of small premiums. So this is kind of what we're doing. We're collecting small money. And if the risk is approaching, we start to push back. And that requires money. You need to spend money to push back. And so that's the only way, because otherwise you're sitting there and it's approaching your stop loss. And now you're going to be tempted to move it. <laughs> Right? And no, 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 no. So you have to do what you have to do. But in our case, we're trying to profit from volatility because it's a measured environment, right? So right here, this move, right here, boom, 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 nine pips. And we're just about to get back to my break even, to my original trade. I'm up to 93. And hopefully uh, in the next no, five, 10 minutes or so, I will have tested the previous highs. Uh, this is the interesting part too. It's the fact that you showed me today that you can make money even if the market's making lower lows or highs on the balances, which is very interesting to, to, to see. Oh, there we go. We're just about ready to close a trade there. Uh, so yeah, they, as long as the market is moving, it doesn't matter what market, you can trade this way. You could be trading wheat, bubble gum, corn, it doesn't matter. As long as it trades, it has a standard deviation. Once you find what is standard, 
your learn standard, and then your radar gets tricked when it's not standard. And so now you know this is risk, and you don't jump into risk, <laughs> right? So you, you, it's a behavior thing. You're, you're learning to behave in the environment that it's in, that is in front of us. And these are measured moves. I don't know who does the measuring. All I know is it's moving nine pips. <laughs> That's all they care. <laughs> right? And so as long as it keeps moving like this, which it has before a war, after a war, so it doesn't seem like war has an impact. If war doesn't impact it, what does? Right? I know news does. This was news. But even news only impacted it four boxes. Four boxes, literally to the pip. Right? So we're not picky. This is just like a, a loose fitting shoe, your best favorite slippers. Right? It's an average. It's good enough. Some moves are smaller, like this, and some moves are bigger. Right? They poke outside the box. But we know the average is nine. And so as long as it's nine, I'm going to take that my, manually and then set it up again and see if it goes a little higher inside the box. You notice my trade is in the box at support right now. I'm at support right here. Boom, boom. And so at support in the box, my target is in the box. So the two elements are in the box inside the standard deviation, high, high, high probability of success. Right? Yes. <laughs> so I, I'm not, I, I'm not hoping or daydreaming. I'm not wishing that the market goes back up. I anticipate that it will. And if it doesn't, I anticipate that it breaks down standard deviations at a time, which are manageable units of measure in my mind i can manage my way out of this even if it's working against me so it's not an element of panic it's not oh no it's not working the internet is teaching everybody to take tiny tiny losses take small loss take a small loss take a small loss eventually you'll be right well what happens when you take a small loss and a small loss and a small loss when you are right you build back your losses and you break even you can't make money taking losses like that. You have to allow some space, a little bit of drawdown, to get the job done. Right? You need space to get the job done. A tight, tight, tight stop is exactly that. A tight, tight, tight stop. <laughs> and so my game here is to make tight, tight, tight profits with the big stop. All right, so yeah, uh, as soon as this trade closes, I'm probably going to flatten everything and just close all of the open trades and give back maybe ten dollars. Let's see, let's see. Push, push. I want to see it go to the top of the box. I'm not wishing or hoping or praying. <laughs> I'm just telling you what I want to see. And so right here, right now, I'll probably collapse everything and just give up and be done for today. There you go. So now I finished today with $95. Pretty cool. And it's only your, what, your 9 a.m. now? Uh, right now it's 8 a.m. for me. 8 a.m. Pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, so uh, we've been speaking for just about an hour. We generated $95 of well, U.S. dollars of profit, and uh, I took a you know, handful of losses along the way, but still, the profits outweigh the losses, right? And this is income that is liquid. It's a Forex account, so I can withdraw this and go have dinner, or in this case, breakfast, right? So it, it's not something you can do with stocks. You can't do this with futures. You can't do this with options. You can trade this way with those markets, but you can't withdraw your money on the same day, right? It takes two days to settle those accounts. We have a very different environment. Oh, man, I closed too early. Oh, darn it. <laughs> I'm leaving money on the table. 
Interesting. But that's the other part where you cannot be, be just stuck because sleep on the table because follow your plan, then things right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. This is uh government work, you know, close enough. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah, and if I would figure that here, I know we we spoke for an hour, but what can people connect with you or find out what to do and, and kind of learn from you after the podcast here? Uh, well, uh, same website as always, jasperforex.com. Uh, use the blue button on there. If you find time on my calendar, schedule yourself in there and we can talk. Uh, I'm on all the social media uh, as Jasper Forex also, and you'll probably find me. That, uh, I've done a couple of other podcasts besides just Desire to Trade, so I have other videos out there you can watch. Cool. Yeah, we're going to catch up more often for sure. Uh, we said last time too, but we should do it then. Yeah, yeah. Look forward to see how you do the future and see how that progresses. It's interesting to talk all about. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's definitely a different approach, and there's a need for this. Right. So people are looking for a way to make income every day, and the problem with the normal way of approaching the markets is you typically generate losses every day. So this is the flip side to that, and uh, you no, know, it allows you to reach your goal as long as you manage the loss. Yeah, for sure. I'll be worried about you and uh, let's, let's catch up soon.